for beautiful music. That was a very nice song. If you ever want to know how to pronounce my last name correctly, Deborah says it better than I do. <laughs> she speaks French very well. Um, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, to the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory. What do you think of in glory? What does the word glory bring to your mind? Light. 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 Shininess. Shininess. Anybody else? Glory. Illumination. Praise. Praise. Adoration. How about virtue? What, what word comes to mind when you hear virtue? Honesty. Pardon me? Honesty. Honesty. Purity. Honor. Isa. Isa. I. I. Isa. Okay, I thought you said Isa, man. I would love it. <laughs> I, I, I was good. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There's all kinds of lust in the world, isn't there? Let's turn our Bibles to Galatians. Galatians 5. You know what? It isn't hard to find lust in the world today. You just look in your own heart. It's not... You know, it seemed to me, to me, that um, I'd have this thing lived with patience. Yeah, I guess I just don't quite have it down. Because it seems like every time I was supposed to get up here and preach, I'm in a big hurry about something. You know, I had too many things to do yesterday. And I'm running around. You know, there's a lot of people down there. <coughs> and uh, it seems like more than normal. And, uh, quite busy, and I, and I happen to get, you know, whenever you're in a hurry, it seems like everybody else is not, <laughs> you know, I'm behind this gal, I got like seven, eight lights to go through, and I'm behind this gal in Orlando, and every time the light turns green, she just sits there, she's playing with her phone, just about the time I'm ready to walk the horn, she finally goes, so this happened several times, and then I captured this vision in my mind of going up and knocking on her door, asking her phone, and put it under her car, and say, "Drive." <laughs> you know, that's not really a good thing. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I definitely need some work here. But you know, the, the wonderful thing is that the Lord—he's never in a hurry, is he? He's never in a hurry. And he's always got it figured out. And he always has time for each and every one of us. Especially that time early in the morning. That's what Jesus, if, if Jesus coveted anything, that's what he coveted. That precious time with his Father. Early in the morning. If we spend that time, then even though we're so busy, if we're focused, we shouldn't have a problem. I shouldn't have fell into that being in a big hurry. You know, even though everything's rushed, it would have been okay. Everything worked out fine. So what's the big deal? What's the big deal? And, you know, if, and if I acted on the thought that I had, that would have really done wonders for my witness, huh? <laughs> you know? You could have started the jail ministry. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, the thought I had was after the fact, when I you know I felt convicted, was, you know, I don't know this girl's struggle. I don't know that she's playing games on her phone. She could be like my niece, Jessie. She could have a daughter that's in the hospital and this woman doesn't sleep. You know, and, 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 and who knows what's going on in people's lives. We have no idea. It's real easy to judge somebody because you're in a hurry. You know, and my wife asked me to go to the store yesterday, and I didn't really want to. I didn't have time. And she said she didn't have time either. So when my teeth gritted just a little bit, I said, I'll do it. <laughs> you know? And I really just don't like people who get in the grocery store, and they put 100 things on the 10-item only. Right? right? 
So what does God do to me yesterday? I get all my stuff out. And this lady, she had four things. You know, she's got it separate here, separate here. I don't know. She must have been buying it for the whole school or something. I don't know. Anyway, we get through all this. Then this guy comes in and says, oh, we're changing the guard here. So they got to change the cash register. And I'm like, man, I picked the wrong one. <laughs> then they take the cover off and put on my lane the 10 item thing. And I got lots more than 10. Now people are coming up here and looking at me like I overdid my balance. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you're that guy. <laughs> I'm that guy I don't like. <laughs> You know, God was really working on me yesterday. He really was. You know, we don't need to be so quick to judge. He really just took me to woodshed yesterday. He showed me some things and that I need to calm down. You know, like I said, Deborah says my name correctly. I don't say it correctly because I'm too fast. She says it correctly. Because she's not in a hurry. All right. I'm not going to be in a hurry. I want you guys to realize you didn't get me up here to look at the clock, so uh, look at the over. All right, Galatians 5, 13. Let's speak a little bit about liberty here. What do you think about when you hear the word liberty? Freedom. 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 Amen. So Galatians 5, 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Okay. Only use not liberty... For an occasion to the flesh, but love, but by love, serve one another. What is the true standard of Christian character? Service. Service. Loving the brother. Doesn't the Lord say, well, it's easy to love somebody who loves you, right? How about loving somebody that's unlovable? How about somebody that spits in your face? Can you love that? I think it would take some patience to love somebody like that. Think about that. That Jesus walked through that. The Lord of glory, with all the power and majesty of God, spit in his face, hold his beard, and he reviled nothing. Would you do that? For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. What do you reckon that to mean? If you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Yes. The law's not Pressing you. Anybody else? You're not condemned by it. You're not condemned by it, okay? You're not judged by it. The spirit is pure. The spirit is pure? Okay. Anybody else? Any you're, thoughts? Yes, brother. You're released from the penalty of it. Released from the penalty? Yes, brother. If you're under the spirit, you don't have to worry about the law because you're not breaking it. You are the law, huh? You are the embodiment of the law. Because you have the character of Christ if you're walking in the Spirit. Correct? So how can you be bound by something that you are? You follow me? The Ten Commandments is God's character. It's who He is. You follow what I'm saying? He's not bound by anything. That's freedom. You see? That's love. It, what, what is love, brothers and sisters? What is love? Caring for one another. My phone, this stupid thing, I need to get it. Tolerating one another. Tolerating one another. Spending time with one another. What is love? Let me ask the word. Putting somebody above yourself. Love is a variety of different feelings, states, and attitudes that ranges from interpersonal affection to pleasure. That's what 
Excessive eating of the best food will produce a morbid condition of the moral feelings. And if the food is not the most helpful, the effects will be still more injurious. Any habit which does not promote healthful action in the human system, system degrades the higher and nobler faculties. Wrong habits of eating and drinking lead to errors in thought and action. Indulgence of appetite strengthens the animal propensities, giving them the ascendancy over the mental and spiritual powers. Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, is the language of the Apostle Peter. Many regard this warning as applicable only to the licentious, but it has a broader meaning. It guards against every injurious gratification of appetite or passion. It is most forcible, it is most forcible warning against the use of such stimulants as narcotics as tea, coffee, tobacco, alcohol, morphine. These indulgence, indulgences may well be classed among the lusts that exert a pernicious influence upon moral character. The earlier these hurtful habits are formed, the more firmly will they hold their victim in slavery to lust, and more certainly will they lower the standard of spirituality. Wherever they may be, those who are truly sanctified will elevate the moral standard by preserving correct physical habits. And like Daniel, presenting to others an example of temperance and self-denial, every depraved appetite becomes a warring lust. Everything that conflicts with natural law creates a diseased condition of the soul. The indulgence of appetite produces a dystemic stomach a torpid liver, a clouded brain, and thus per perverts the temper and the spirit of the man. And these enfeebled powers are offered to God, who refuse to accept the victims for sacrifice unless they were without a blemish. It is our duty to bring our appetite and our habits or of life into conformity to natural law. If the body offered upon Christ's altar were examined with the, with the close scrutiny to which the Jewish sacrifices were subjected, who, with our present habits, would be accepted? Do you think it matters what we do in this body, this temple? I think it's pretty obvious that it, that it, that it does. <clears throat> Let us turn to uh, Deuteronomy. Way far up in your Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Be reading verses 17 and 18. Can y'all get there to say amen? Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God in his testimonies and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you, with thee, and that thou may just go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. Now keep... Keep your mark there, and I want you to turn a little bit left, further left in the numbers. I don't know. I just lost my place. <laughs> I thought it was numbers. No, it isn't either. It's judges. I'm so sorry. Go oh, right. Judges 21. I wondered why the scripture wasn't popping up there. 21, 25. We use this today in Sabbath school. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. But there is, if we, we, we turn back to Deuteronomy, it says, And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. 
So there is a difference, isn't there, in what's right and just in our eyes and what's right and just in God's eyes. Now, if you're in Deuteronomy chapter 6, let's turn to uh, verse 4. Starting in verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest in the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and thou shalt be the frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. You know, the Lord says in John, I am the vine and ye are the branches, right? So where do we draw our nourishment from? From the Lord, right? Because we can't live separate. You can't take a branch and break it from the vine and the branch live, right? The branch has to get its nourishment from the vine. How did the Lord walk? How did the Lord talk? How did he act? What was his will for our lives? What is his will for our lives? Do you think it's any different for Jesus than it, than it is for us? No. When, when are we going to see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? When we're ready? Are we ever going to be ready on the road we're on? Do we love one another? Do we really truly love one another? Even if, you know what? If one of you guys, God forbid, step on my toe and get an infected toenail. I can still love you? How about that? And then the next week, the guy steps on the one that's already hurting. Can I still love him? Can we forgive one another? Can we stop judging one another like I judged that poor woman on the phone the other day? Like I was afraid of that guy judging me in the line because I had way more than 10 on, on, the, on the, the little conveyor belt. Let us turn our Bibles to Isaiah. Isaiah 33. I love it. Isaiah. Isaiah 33, beginning in verse 14. Y'all there? <clears throat> the sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? Who do you think this is talking about? <coughs> he that walketh righteously and speaketh upright. He that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hand from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from the hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. How much evil is there to see in this world today? Unbelievable. You know, I, so many people are just addicted to their phones. They just got to see the blood and the carnage, you know? That was another thing that I had a problem with yesterday with my little patience deal. You know, there was a, an accident on, four, on 44, and the guy in front of me, he's got to stop. Stop. And just look at all over and see if there's any blood that he didn't see. And I was standing there in the truck and I thought about honking that horn. And all them cops are there and everything nameless. I just, I'm just going to sit here because it's killing me to not honk that horn. <laughs> don't people just love it? They love it. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munition of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is far off. Thine heart shall, be, shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? 
Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Look upon Zion, the city of the Solomon Knights. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall be, shall ever be moved, neither shall any of the cords thereof be, be broken. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, wherein shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ships pass thereof. The Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Thy tacklings are loose. They could not well strengthen their mass. They could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of a great spoil divided. The lame take the prey. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Amen. Now we'll turn to Numbers. Numbers 21. The name of this little talk is Look and Live. Look and Live. Numbers 21, beginning in verse 8. We are all ready. Any amens? Amen. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent. And set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if the serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. What does it mean to beheld the serpent of brass? Focus. Exactly. Pastor said it. Focus, right? It's not casual contact. It's not, eh, you know, there was two thieves on the cross with Jesus, right? The one looked at him, didn't he? It didn't do him any good, did it? But the other one looked intently, didn't he? And he said, Lord, and you want to talk about faith. When this guy's dying before you, and he says, you remember me in your kingdom, you don't think that took faith? Come on now. You have that kind of faith? I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Holiness of heart, brothers and sisters, will produce right actions. Mm -hmm. Holiness of heart will produce right actions. Love is a verb. If we're going to look at this serpent on the pole, this is an amazing thing, that Jesus Christ, symbol as a serpent? Have you ever stopped and just chewed on it for a minute? I mean, when I first came across that the first time, I went, are you kidding me? How can this be? How can this be? Jesus took it all, brothers and sisters. Every single filthy, rotten wickedness. And he let it become him. He drank it all. Every minute. You see, the people that are eventually going to be choose destruction, there's no reason for them to go that route. Jesus has drank the cup to the full yes. for every single man Amen. and woman. Amen. There is no difference. Brothers and sisters, I want to ask you, what are you growing in your garden? The garden, pardon me, mayors, taters. Let me tell you, the Lord says you plant a seed, it'll grow. Huh. If I spend, you know, I spent a little bit of time not so patient yesterday. If I don't pull that stinking plant that's going to start growing up up by the roots and throw it away, it's going to bear some fruit, isn't it? It's going to bear some ugly fruit. Look, I don't like who I am when I'm in a hurry and in a rush. When I'm patient, I don't have any problems. Really, I mean, everybody has problems, but, you know, but there are no problems, right? But if you're in a hurry, everything's a problem and everybody's in your way. Don't let that be. There's
there's too many people I see out there. I spend a lot of time driving on the road, and too many people are too, way too big a hurry. And they really got nowhere to go. And they're not really doing anything anyway. You know, it was just like me yesterday. I had to be there at 3.30. I got there in time, and I sat for an hour. So all that time that I spent being upset about having to do everything and being in a hurry to make my appointments did me no good. So why did I do it? Evidently, I've got a seed planted that needs to be ripped up. And I'm praying for you to pray for me that I can just kill this thing. You know, I found, I don't know if you like gardening, I love gardening. The precious plants, when you're weeding, they come up so easy. They come up so easy. The most precious ones that you love, it's like gone. But the weeds, <clears throat> I come up upon this little kid pulling a weed one day. I says to him, I says, is that hard to pull? He says, yeah, I'm pulling against the whole world. <laughs> Our closing song will be 287.